I'm a teacher at Connections, a community-based art school in Baltimore, where I have taught for the last three years. In the fall, I will be starting at the Baltimore Design School. Um, and I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, my situation with certification. I went to college as an undergraduate student and trained in, um, trained to become a teacher. So I possessed a, um, a teacher certification from the state of Florida. So I taught in Florida for, um, for a bit, went and did some teaching in, this, um, in Virginia. So when I got a job here in Baltimore, I thought it should be a relatively simple process known as reciprocity to be able to get my certification switched over. I submitted all of my paperwork. The, um, so by the time I was, um, I was hired, they, they asked for all of my materials. So all of us who have been through this process know that that is your transcripts, a copy of your teacher certification. It goes over to the powers that be. They look it over, they send it over to MSDE, and then you should be good to go. Okay, this was the fall of, uh, fall of 2012. Once I received the certification, the, uh, received certification from Maryland for the areas where I was certified, it was the fall of 2014. So for two years, I was in this limbo situation where I did not have certification. And I was in one of those weird situations. The weird thing about this is that I am certified in two areas. In the area that I am not um, that I am certified in, but was not teaching in, was the area that they gave me credit for. So in my transcripts, the problem that had arisen was the fact that, and I kept advocating to our executive director, kept advocating to my principals, guys, they're not reading my transcripts. Because the um, the powers that be said that I did not have um, all of my credits and um, I, didn't, I needed some more test scores when I had a master's degree in the area that I was teaching in. So they told me that I would need to um, either go take some more classes and or take the Praxis exam. So out of, um, out of stubbornness, I refused to take the test. So I'm like, they just need to read my stuff. So I will go down and see the powers that be um, kind of frequently about, guys, make sure that you're reading my transcripts. Met with one person, met with two people, met with three people, and then I decided to be a little bold and I asked for someone new. When I went to ask for someone new, I said, is there any way that somebody else can evaluate my transcripts? She said, sure, um, I'll give it to my supervisor and, and she will get back with you. But in the meantime, go ahead and take the Praxis exam for the area that you are currently teaching in. So I bit the bullet, paid the $220 or whatever it was to take the test, because we all know that the Praxis exam, for, even for certain subject areas that are not STEM areas, are more expensive. So I went and I took, took the, well, went down to Montgomery County, took the Praxis exam, passed, of course, and, um, and brought my scores back two weeks later. Only to find out when I went, in, went into the room to see, this, um, see my new certification person, she said, and I quote, when, uh, when she found out who it was and she grabbed my folder, she said, you're about to be very angry. And I said, why am I about to be very angry? She said, we neglected to look at all of your paperwork. So for two years, I had to deal with, you're not highly qualified, the, the, um, because I taught at a Title I school, so therefore all of your teacher, I mean all of your students, um, parents receive the paperwork saying that you're not highly qualified in your area. And to add insult to injury, we all know that when you are a teacher, a teacher who is teaching in an area where you're not certified, it has a little hierarchy status issues with you being in the school system, right? So therefore, your administrators, depending on who your administrator is, um, can treat you however they want to treat you because you're not highly qualified. But I was not not highly qualified because I was not certified. I was not highly qualified because the people who were, whose job it was to evaluate my transcript 
did not evaluate my transcripts. However, at the school that I was teaching at at the time was full, fully staffed, and this is not a knock on any of our alternative teacher certifications, but there are certain nonprofit organizations that many of our colleagues happen to teach in, and from day one, they receive a sort of protection, if you will. And not only do they get protection, but there are a lot of benefits that come with that program. Hey, we're not knocking the game, it just is what it is. But the reality of that is, when, as you're teaching, and many of us who teach in Baltimore are teaching in Title I schools. So situations like mine are not only common, but they are the rule rather than the exception. So as we continue to look at No Child Left Behind, as we continue to look at all of the various ways that we tend to serve our students in the classroom, we must pay particular attention to the areas of certification. Because if we do not pay close attention to the areas of certification, then you will start to find the best, um, okay, let me say it this way. Many times in a school, those who can transfer knowledge to students may not be the teacher who certified. Right. However, the teachers who are certified may or may not be able to transfer knowledge to a particular student. Hey, we're not knocking it, it is what it is. But the thing that, that I'm here to debate and that I want to pose to each and every one of us as we continue to uh, talk about holistically about schools is, what are we going to do to deal with the areas of certification? Baltimore City is one of those schools that is struggling with how they're going to deal with provisional certification. They're dealing with how they're going to deal with the highly qualified status because so many of our schools are Title I. But um, as we continued and as we look through the night, I would admonish each and every one of us who are in the classroom or those pre-professional teachers who are considering going in the classroom, I, it would just be my warning to pay very particular attention to your certification, to pay very particular attention to when your certification expires, Whatever MSDE is telling you that you need to take, take it. Whatever test that they're telling you to take, take it. And the reason why I'm going to tell you to take it rather than to be stubborn like I did, because for two years that left me in a limbo area, and when a change of leadership happened, then I was susceptible to the changes of the new leadership. So as we go forward, let us pay close attention to certification and the laws that pertain to certification. Thank you.